So now, it's, now that we're comfortable, we know all three of Newton's laws, hopefully, um, we're going to talk about applying them. So we're just going to, this is going to be a lot more problems, okay? Before we were mostly going over definitions and concepts, now we're getting into problems. So what, what are the, what are the three laws? <laughs> like, like set your <laughs> pen down force. dramatically and then just stared at me. <laughs> but the second law is force equals mass times acceleration. We become very intimately aware of that one. But the first and third are important too. They come up, right? So what's the first one? Yeah. If something's moving, it goes in a straight line forever and ever at the same speed unless a force acts on it, okay? That's con the, the dumber part of that is if it's not moving, it continues to not move unless a force acts on it, all right? And the third law is the one we've just spent the most time on, which is that all forces come as part of a pair, and that's useful in solving multi-body problems. Okay, so you have to figure out where those pairs are, how they connect the different objects that are interacting, and then we use that to simplify our math. Okay, so yes, that's every action has an equal and opposite reaction, but it has a much more mathematical reason. Basically, the first law says if you don't have acceleration, your net force is zero. Okay, mathematically, that's what you're saying. Every time we say MA and then we just go zero when we add up all our forces, that's the first law. Okay. The second law is every time we sum up our forces and set them equal to mass times acceleration in that direction, that's the second law. And if we have x, y, and z, then we have to do that x, y, and z times per object. So if we have a three-dimensional problem with two objects, you can potentially have six force equations, right? Six F equals MAs. And then the third law says, okay, there's action-reaction pairs, and that means this variable over here is equal to this variable, so we don't have to write more equations, okay? Because remember, this is all just solving systems of equations, so I hope you just love algebra because there's a lot of algebra here. Also trig, because triangles and vectors, okay? So when we're applying Newton's law, basically it's just using Newton's third, first law, using Newton's second law, and using Newton's third law, and then also things move in circles still, remember? That was annoying before, and it's gonna continue to be annoying throughout the class, okay? Circles have different units and different <laughs> variables that we have to deal with and once you get used to it it's not too bad but it can be very irritating okay so we call whenever we're talking about forces the other word we use is dynamics what was the one we used for motion what was the other word for motion the fancy word kinematics there's also a, an engineering class called dynamics which is basically just this, this couple of chapters in physics, but like with more engineering words for a whole semester. So uh, statics is, you can guess what statics is, it's all first law stuff, right? Stuff's not moving, all the forces have to add up to zero. Also torques, we haven't gotten to torques yet, but torques are pretty important in engineering. I think they call them moments or something fancy like that. They just have different language, it's all just physics repackaged for different purposes, okay? Um, so, some applications of the first law. Remember, we always draw the free body diagram. So we draw a picture, we label all our forces, we draw it on an axis. The axes are really important. Remember, sometimes we tilt them, sometimes we don't. That's, that's all stuff to keep track of. We want to identify and label the forces. We want to write a net force equation by adding up all the forces. We want to figure out where acceleration is because Newton's second law includes acceleration. So essentially, we do something like this. When we sum up all the forces in the x direction, then that's equal to mass of the object times A in the x direction, and then same with Y, okay? Um, the net force in the x direction determines the acceleration in the x direction. The net force in the y direction determines acceleration in the y direction. Here's something that might have been useful when we did the lab. Um, but remember, just like we're assuming all ropes are massless to start out with, and we will get past this eventually if you stay in these, like, physics and engineering track classes. Um, they don't always, they're not always frictionless. We'll deal with that later in the class. We're going to start by assuming all pulleys are frictionless, and all they really do is change the direction of tension, okay? This ends up being really annoying because you have an, this is an acceleration constraint, so these two things will accelerate the same, but now this acceleration is this way, and this acceleration is that way. That's great, you know if this is five, this is five, but the directions start to matter a lot because you have all these vectors that you have to add up. And the lucky thing about the friction lab is we didn't have acceleration, so we didn't have to worry about that yet. 
Uh, but now that we have acceleration, you're going to have to figure out how to match the coordinate system here with the coordinate system here. And that's either, you can either do that algebraically or you can turn your coordinates, okay? Remember, a pulley does not affect tension in a rope. It only changes its direction, okay? You could also have a pulley with a ramp, so you could have like angles that go this way and or you could have things that go like this. It's very, it's very fun. Look at the <laughs> problems in the book. It does get really neat. Um, and th then, like I said, be careful about your signs because, um, you know, this is in the positive x direction. If you do the standard coordinates, this is in the negative y direction. But they should be the same acceleration because it's an acceleration constraint, so you have to figure out a way to make that work. And we'll, I'll talk about some strategies for that, okay? All right, we're going to start with a clicker question. Oh, okay, we're closer to B. Uh, please discuss, we'll vote again. Ah, okay. Well, I'm gonna set this up during lab anyway, but the answer is B, and that's because, remember, if this thing were attached to a wall on one side, what would it read? 49. 49, 49. 49. and it, as long as it's in equilibrium, it's gonna read 49. 49 is the tension everywhere in the string or the rope. Okay, so this thing's just measuring the tension. I actually have a little spring scale that um, I can pass around that you guys can play with just to get the idea of what it actually measures. And you can see inside it, it's got like springs. So here's a little mask you can put on it so you can measure things. I can give you a second mask if you want to get fancy. Careful, they roll away. <laughs> um, I think this one's lead, so don't eat it. Okay. I know it looks good. Okay. Um, oh gosh, sorry, camera. Home, home. All right. Ah, there it is. Okay. So the answer is going to be B, and um, this will bring us to our. Did we do this problem? No. This is the. So we we've talked about acceleration constraints, and this is our first big problem on acceleration constraints. Yeah. Okay. This is going to be um, block A and block B. Okay. What are our forces here? Tension. Gravity. Gravity for both of them, right? So this would be mass B, G, and this is going to be mass A, G, okay? Any other forces that we want to deal with? Yes? Normal force? Normal force, yes. So there's normal force here. What about on this block? No normal force. But it has tension, right? And then this one? Also tension. We know these tensions should be the same. Um, and then there, there, there's no friction, right? So it's frictionless. So we don't have another force here. So which way would our accelerations be? Yeah, this way, right? Because you see there's only one force in this direction. And then probably this way, because you're going to guess that weight is overcoming tension, right? And so what do we know about these accelerations? Same. They should be the same, OK? So we've drawn our picture. We can draw our free body diagrams. Um, that would look like this, right? So for block A and for block B, oh, sorry. Uh, this would be normal force, mass A, G, um, and tension. And then this one is tension and mass B, G. We have acceleration and acceleration. Okay, but what do we want to worry about here? We, we have our pictures, we have our free body diagrams, but we still need a coordinate system. Okay, what coordinate system do we want to use for block A? It's just the regular one. So we'll say X, Y. How about for block B? X, Y. We really just need Y. We're going to take X, Y, and we're going to rotate it. And the reason we're going to do that, and you don't have to do this. You can do the other one and then match it later. I can show you how to do both of those. But let's just say, we don't actually need Y here. We'll just call this X. And the reason I do this is that means acceleration always points in the positive X direction, and I don't have to worry about the sign of the acceleration. Okay? So... When, we'll see what I mean when I, we sum up the forces, and I'll show you how we can do it another way so you understand what I mean. But remember, when I, at the beginning of the class and when we tilted our axes, I told you coordinate systems are chosen by you, 
to make the math easier. So you want to choose the coordinate system that makes the math as easy as possible for you, um, unless you like difficulty, in which case do there's Any coordinate system you choose will work, but some of them will give you less steps, okay? Um, so we're gonna choose this one, and I always default to putting my coordinate system in the direction of the acceleration if you know the acceleration, okay? So now what do we do? What equation should we start with? Newton's second law. So we sum up all of our forces. So we use Newton's second law, which is net force as a vector is equal to mass times acceleration as a vector. Okay. In this case, all of our accelerations are in the x direction. So if we sum up our forces in the y direction for block A, okay, that's block A, that's going to be um, normal force minus mass a g equals zero we don't actually need this for this problem but we're just practicing sum of y sum of x okay sum up in the x direction that's going to be tension is equal to mass a right times the acceleration now tension and acceleration are positive because they're in the positive x direction okay for block b if you sum up the forces this time in the x direction Okay, that means this is positive, yes? That's the way we've chosen it. So we say mass B, G, minus tension, okay? Even though normally we'd say tension minus this if we're using a more standard coordinate system, is equal to mass B times acceleration, okay? That's for this coordinate system. Let me just show you really quickly if you used I'll use blue. If you used a standard coordinate system like this, right, it wouldn't change anything for block A. But for block B, instead of this equation, you would sum up the forces in the y direction, okay? It would be T minus mass B G is equal to mass B A. But in this case, A points in the negative direction. So you would have to call it negative A, okay? You'll notice if you just multiply this equation through by negative one, it's exactly the same as this equation. But the reason I don't do it this way usually for myself is you have to keep track of a lot more negative signs. And it's, it's really easy to make a mistake on the signs and then get a horrifyingly wrong answer, okay? All right. So. That's just an aside. You can choose your coordinate systems however you're comfortable. If you want to keep track of the negative signs, that's totally okay, and you will get the right answer as long as you do your accounting correctly. All right? So um, now that we have this, we don't actually need this equation because it doesn't lead to anything, but we're looking for acceleration. So we're going to, we have, uh, well, so let's see, how many equations do we have? So two equations. How many things do we not know? Two. Two. We don't know um, acceleration, and we don't know tension, and those are the two things we're asked for in the problem. Okay, so we have two equations, we have two unknowns, that means from a math perspective, we're in pretty good shape. Okay? Um, so, we start by, the, we already know what T is, so we can plug that in, we say mass B, G minus mass A, I'm very sorry about this chalk, is equal to mass B A. So we just do some algebra, we say mass B G is equal to mass A plus mass B times A, all right? So when you solve for acceleration, that means you have G mass B over the total mass, okay? Is this a fraction that's going to be less than one? This. Well, it has to be, right? Because it's B plus A on the bottom. So we know what G is, and we, we estimated it's a third to a sixth worth of G. So what's mass B? One, right? So if you want to solve for your acceleration, Mass B is one, and all the units are gonna cancel, and mass A plus mass B, four. So one-fourth G, okay? 
So a fourth of the acceleration due to gravity, and that's because this smaller block has to drag this bigger block. So our range was good. We got in between one third and one sixth, but the answer ends up being one fourth. Okay, and so that's about uh, acceleration would be what 2.45 meters per second squared. Okay, um, or you can leave it as one fourth g if if you feel, you know, like you don't want to plug that in. And then for tension, um, we just go back to this original equation. So now that we know that what acceleration is, we can say tension is equal to mass A, and mass A is three kilograms. So mass A times um, A, acceleration. So that's going to be three kilograms times, um, what is that? Oh, 2.45 um, meters per second squared. And that's going to give us something like 7. Point, I can't do that in my head. 7.25? Three, 3.5. 3.5. Nice. Did you do that in your head? You used the calculator. Ah, oh, okay. And I'm not going to feel bad. Uh, tension is going to be 7.35 newtons. We're just plugging back into the original equation. Okay? Any questions? Here's our next question. Mostly A. Okay. Please discuss briefly. We'll vote again. All right. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> so the answer is A. Yes, all three blocks are at rest. The tension should be the same in all the ropes because this is, if you're pulling on this and this and it's in equilibrium, it should be the same as if you're attached to a wall or a surface, okay? Cool. Uh, I lost it. Okay, we're going to do another problem. I'm going to have you guys try this out and here's my incentive for you to, to actually make an effort. Um, if it doesn't look like people are really trying to do it, I'm going to call people up to set it up on the board. Um, and you too can use the horrifyingly squeaky chalk. Because it is, you know, almost Halloween, so we want some scary stuff to happen. Okay. So this problem is similar to the previous problem, and just to get started, let's predict our acceleration, okay, because that's the easiest thing to predict. So in this case, in the previous case, we had one block that would have just dropped if it weren't tied to the other block. And so that gives us g. And then we assumed, because it has to drag this other block along, that it's going to be less than g. Is that a safe assumption to make here, too? Yeah. So right, one of these blocks is falling, all right, the, and it's pulling the other block up. And which way do we expect this to go? Like, which one's going down? A. 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 We're going to say that block A is going down. And why do we, want to, why do we think that? Yes, it's ways, it has more mass, okay? And so um, because of that, we assume block B is going up, and because they're tied together, we assume those accelerations, even though they're in different directions, should be the same magnitude, okay? So that's our first place to start, and we're going to assume the acceleration magnitude is some fraction of 9.8 meters per second squared because it's no longer in free fall. It has to haul another mass, which has inertia, so it's probably like... What range do we think? Like a quarter to a half, or anybody want to give a guess? Some of you have the answer, so it's a little bit backwards. <laughs> Maybe like a half, okay? Um, so let's say we're guessing it's about a half. And then we just want to draw our free body diagram. So what forces are we dealing with in this case? Weight and tension for both blocks, right? So both blocks have tension. The tension should be equal. We're also going to solve for the tension. But they also both have weight. So this would be mass A, G, and this would be mass B, G, OK? So if you want to draw your free body diagrams, oh, the other thing, what coordinate system do we want to use? X. We're going to use X or Y, right? But we, we only need one dimension. So which way does X point in for B? Up. Let's say up, because we're picking the direction of acceleration, and then we would pick down for block A. Okay, and the reason this matters is when we draw our free body diagram. So here's our free body diagram for block A. 
And then here's our free body diagram for block B. Okay, now when we draw our forces on here, um, we know this one, oh actually, I drew that wrong, hang on, move the arrow here. This one points down, right, so this is X, this is X, and it, it matters how we write the equation. So we draw tension and mass A G, tension and mass B G. We still include our acceleration so we know which direction to draw it, okay? And then when we sum up our forces, that's when the direction actually matters. So we use Newton's second law, that's net force equals mass times acceleration, in this case all in the x direction. So for block A, when we sum up the forces in the x direction, we know that down is positive. So which force is positive? Yeah, mass times gravity. Weight should be positive because if this is positive, this is the force that's pointing that way. So we write the equation of, as mass AG minus tension, because tension is pointed in the negative x direction based on our coordinate system, is equal to mass A times our acceleration. Okay? Um, for the forces in the x direction for block B, so we'll say A, B, um, we have tension pointing up, so it, it's written tension minus mass BG is equal to mass B times A. And what two things are we trying to solve for here? Tension, yes, we want to solve for tension, and we want to solve for acceleration. And we have two equations. So here's our two equations from Newton's second law and our diagram and two unknowns. Okay, so we should be able to solve this. The algebra is not as pretty because now we have these two different, like many more terms that we have to algebra as a verb. Okay, so we're going to start with this. We'll solve for T. So this is going to be T is equal to um, mass B times A plus mass B times G. And then we can plug this in over here. So that's going to look like mass A G minus mass uh, B times A minus, okay, because remember where it's minus the whole quantity, mass B G is equal to mass A A. So very annoying, but we just want to distribute G's on one side, A's on the other. So we end up with mass a minus mass B times G is equal to mass A plus mass B times A. So when we solve this, we end up with mass A minus mass B. Sorry, that's ugly. Over mass A plus mass B right, this whole, this whole fraction times G, all right? But mass A is 3, so 3 minus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 is 1 half of G, okay? And if you put that, the numbers in, that's 4.9 meters per second squared. So that's our acceleration. It's half a, we've lost this, half a G. I lost the pencil. It doesn't want to, oh, it doesn't want to write down there. Here. Ah, there it goes. Okay. And then what else do we need to solve for? Tension. tension. But we already have an equation for tension over here. So if we plug in our numbers, that ends up being mass B, which is 1 kilogram times 4.9. I'm going to run out of space over here. I'm going to make this smaller. Just a second. Bear with me. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we have a little bit more space now. So we end up with one kilogram times 4.9 meters per second squared plus one kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared. And that gives us a tension of 14.7 newtons. So that's, we didn't guess that one, but that, does that seem reasonable to you guys? 
Yes. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Things get small. Yeah. So we're just plugging in the numbers. Um, you could also redistribute, I mean, if you want to be fancier with your algebra, you could just call this um, A plus G times mass B. We'd have more space. <laughs> okay. All right. One question about the coordinate system. What if you just chose a regular XY coordinate system for this and we're just consistent the whole time? Would you get a different answer? If you make your equations properly, no. And so let me just quickly say if we chose this, oops, if we just chose uh, this to be y, okay, when we sum up our stuff in the y direction, the main, so this equation for block b would be totally the same, okay? We'd sum up the, the stuff for y, you'd still get this equation, no big deal. The difference is if you called this summing up in the y direction, um, and this is y in this case, you would say tension minus mass A G is equal to mass A times negative A. So as you can see, this would give us a negative sign here um, and here, and it just flips the signs, okay? So if you multiply this equation through by negative one, you get the same thing as this equation. Okay, so you can choose any coordinate system you want. It's just a matter of keeping track of all of your signs so that you don't get confused. Because if you mess up a sign here, you'll end up with like a fraction bigger than one, and it'll, you should be, that's, that's why I'm asking you to predict the acceleration. Because if you mess up the signs, it should be pretty obvious. You'll get an acceleration of like 20 meters per second squared, which makes no physical sense. Because we know there's no way, unless you're shooting it out of a cannon or something, that you should get an acceleration that's bigger than G, okay? And that's where estimation really helps you out because you'll know right away if you've made a sign error instead of just writing some nonsensical stuff and being like, oh, okay? So if you end up with a G that doesn't make, or an acceleration that doesn't make sense, go back and check where your negative signs are. Um, yeah, for some reason, Ryan Reynolds is in this picture. Okay, or maybe it's Arnold? No, it's Arnold. So let's talk a little bit more about police. So remember, the maximum weight I was watching a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies when I wrote these slides because he was also the, the Arnie from Arnie and Wimpy because I'm like, well, strong people, that must be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anyway, um, so the maximum weight anyone can lift with a single pulley is equal to their own weight. I actually, side note, I got really, I was, I was in Amsterdam over the summer and I got really excited because I went to the Maritime Museum and they had this like exhibit, I think for children, but um, Oh, hang on, this thing is in the wrong place. This exhibit that was for children about pulleys, and they had these crates that were all the same mass, and they had like one pulley, two pulleys, three pulleys, and you could like pull it and feel how much weight it feels like you're pulling, and now I like really want to build that somewhere so that we can, we can do this. It would be very, um, a big waste of space because I would only need it for like this slide <laughs> and maybe like the next two, but I still, I was still really excited about it, and my, my partner that was with me on this trip was like, wow, you're like really enjoying these pulleys. And I was like, it's really cool. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So if, if you have more than one pulley involved, you can treat the pulleys as interacting objects. You can use our acceleration constraints. And what it ends up doing is splitting the weight into fractions, okay? So because the pulley now has uh, points of contact with like a wall or a ceiling, that you can distribute the weight to that, and the weight that you actually pull on one end of the string ends up being less, okay? So um, basically when we say treat them as interacting objects, that means for each pulley, you draw it its own free body diagram, okay? Uh, we've been over this, but just as a review, we, when we solve problems on inclines, the easiest thing to do is tilt your axes so that you're in the direction of acceleration, okay? And since, uh, do we want to try this problem? Yes. Okay, so we have a block with mass 5 kilograms. It's sitting on a scale uh, of an inclined plane at an angle of 30 degrees. So what do we want to start with? First off, what would the scale read if it was flat? Five 
Well, energy. the weight. It's going to read the weight, right? Yeah, yeah, mg. So if it's 5 kilograms, you multiply it by about 10. So it should be about 50 newtons. But in this case, 49, because 9.8 times 5 gives you 49. So are we expecting our answer to be bigger or smaller than 49? should be smaller than 49. So we're expecting an answer that's smaller than 49. So we'll draw our force di free body diagram. So here's our normal force. Here's our weight mg. And um, we're not, I guess we're not at all worried about friction, although there must be some sort of friction. But since, and it's, I'm going to call it static friction, but since this thing is not sliding, we know there's static friction. But what are we looking for if we're looking for what the scale reads? What what always tells us what a scale reads? Gravity. On a flat surface, yes. But what it reads directly is the normal force, right? So when you, whenever you have a problem that's asking you for what the scale would read, you're solving for the normal force, OK? So because of that, if we think about how um, so we, we you know, we have this like ghost acceleration because it would be this way, but really acceleration zero because it's static friction. Um, but we still want to pick a coordinate system that looks like this, right? A tilted coordinate system. So what that means is that if we split up our weight, right? This is our angle, 30 degrees. This is 30 degrees. So you end up with mg sine theta and mg cosine theta. Okay, um, and so if you want to, you don't need to really worry about what's happening in the x direction because we're only looking to solve normal force. So we sum up our forces in the y direction. That's going to be normal force minus mg cosine theta is equal to mass times acceleration. But what's our acceleration? Zero. Zero. So that means normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. And because we were given all these values, we have five kilograms. We have 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have cosine of 30 degrees. Um, that means that, oops, I lost this. Oh, hang on. That means that um, we can plug those values in, and we're going to get 42 newtons, OK? Which turns out 30 degrees is not a big incline. Um, is that less than 49? Yes, so less than 49 newtons, which is what the scale reads on a flat surface. Okay? So, remember, when, a, when you're asked what a scale reads, which force are you looking for? Normal force, always normal force. 